And we're live! Welcome to the channel, everybody! Hello! Hope you're all doing well. Adam Steele here. And today, we're going to be playing with some new plugins. Well, new to me. These are the plugins from Acoustica Audio, which are plugins that I've been wanting to try for a long time. Hello, Al! Hello, everybody! Um, it's the, the kind of stuff that can be really quite expensive, if I'm being perfectly honest. Um, but these guys make these really clever CPU intensive plugins that do crazy stuff with um, IRs. Ah uh, yes, everybody's got commercials to get through. Yes, that is a very good point. So yes, hope you're all doing marvelously well. Um, but yeah, um, we're going to be playing with these plugins that are quite hard on the CPU, but with a modern machine that may not be an issue for you like it used to be. These guys make a plugin called Nebula, and I tried using Nebula uh, years ago, but it's kind of, it's not the prettiest plugin, and it basically gives you like drop down lists of different impulse responses we, people have made. And apparently it can sound quite good, but it can be really quite unintuitive. Now, I've got these plugins that they make, like this one is called Top, which is their tape emulation. It's a combination of IRs plus like saturation, compression curves, all sorts of stuff um, to make it really sound like whatever the original was supposed to be. Hello, Billy. Yes, um, I'm feeling better. That's another thing is, yeah, my, my, my wife had COVID last week. I, according to the tests, didn't, but I really wasn't well either. And I felt better by Sunday, went out to a, a gathering and managed to bash my head on the top so hard that I'm still suffering from concussion. So yes, I'm drinking good old water today because if I drink anything alcoholic combined with a mild concussion, that might be enough to send me sideways. So I have been looking at some of these plugins. I've actually had to make a list on paper of some of them because these guys make so many plugins but a lot of them are designed to sound like a lot of analog hardware that they are not allowed to say what they're modeling i think hello mage hello al hello everybody make yourselves at home we've not hit play on anything yet um this song is a song by hobo hotel they've asked me to mix this so I'm going to be mixing this from scratch. As you can see, everything's still kind of grey and uncoloured. Um, in the top right-hand corner, I've got the usual um, CPU meter that you can find in Reaper by going to View and Performance Meter. So that should give us a bit of an idea of a CPU. Although, I'm kind of... You know, it's a bit unfair for me to do that because I'm running... Uh, as of right now, I believe, the most powerful desktop CPU you can buy, which is the AMD 5950X, 16 core monster. And so that won't give you a very good idea of what everybody else can do. So apologies for that, but I kind of need a fire breathing dragon of a machine for what I do. So because of all the video editing that I do, not just for my own channel, but for everybody else. You know, it needs to be something that can turn stuff around quickly. So, uh, yes, we're going to start by uh, organising a few things here. So, let's make a drums group, or group, as you humans would call them. Uh, put the drums in it, and do our usual colouring thing. In fact, I'm going to make a few more, and I'm going to sub folder the uh the toms never seen anyone call the toms tim tam and tom before which is weird but i get the idea there hi-hats overheads room right so let's color those in to a track color Ooh, nice orange today it's something that i do that really winds a lot of people up who have these really fixed ways of working is i use random color choices um, and see if I like it because to me the color is not like for, for some people they'll go this color is drums this color is bass this color is guitars I get that I understand it but um, depending on what I'm doing I might not have um, 
the same layout every time. Uh, I might have not have the same instrumentation depending on what I'm working on. So I've got a bass group. I've got a guitar group. Group, not chirp. And I've got a vocals group. I don't yet have an effects group, which is fine. So this is all before you guys hear anything. This is all just to get things arranged. And so there we go. Save. Now I've got a couple of plugins on here already. Um, the drums, I was listening to this earlier to make sure it all worked. So I flipped the phase on the underneath of the snare using this little button here because the, the, the mics were out of polarity with each other. So that's an easy fix. And I put gates on the snare track. So there we go. Dink, 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 dink. Now let's have a listen through this before we turn on any plugins, apart from those gates on the snare. I've been searching for some monsters to see you far away. All the words to be fresh and how I was to be gone and saved. I thought the man was still up for the woman next day in life. Feeling the grudge to the mother he never had. So this has got some real potential, uh, but as of right now, nothing has been done to it. So the first thing that I did is I really like this God Particle plugin from Cradle. So I'm going to be using that pretty much on its default, and I've turned the uh, output down by dB. This is going to be significantly louder because the limiter is now being hit. <laughs> For some indie record labels, that's probably done. Uh, and now onto the acoustic or audio stuff. Uh, so on the master bus, I'm going to use this plugin called Top, which I believe is very similar to a well, a tape, tape top. And I was having to poke through some of the presets in here before because presets really seem to be the way to go for me to start with these plugins because it kind of sets everything because not only do you have like say EQ points here but you've got choices of like which EQ type it's using which tape it's using lots of stuff like that so uh there's a lot going on which you can change and so yeah like there's a really kind of specific tape machine here. Which I probably don't want to use an EQ curve that looks like that. But on some of these choices here, there are different like this uh different tape machines that you can use. Stereo tape machines are probably what I want. And let's have a look. Ah uh, yeah, so a Studa stereo tape machine running a Rocky 2, they've called it, 30 IPS. And... So before we've even done anything, it sounds like it's kind of clearer in the mids and a little bit kind of warmer on the bottom. So now we're going to have to start building up our mix. And so there's there's a lot to do. Hi Marty, hi everybody, welcome in. Uh, we need to start setting up some effects. So at the end of the project, just behind my head there, I'm going to make an effects group. And I'm going to make three 
plugins in there. So I'm going to call this FX Group. And so I'm going to go Short Room. Short Room. Uh, plate and Slap Delay. Those are probably the three that we're going to use today. And I just happen to know that there are some Acoustica plugins that I can play with that will definitely for the reverb replace what I used to use. So uh, Silver is their reverb, which is very cool. And there's I've not installed every possible... Um, uh, not, re not installed every possible option on here, but there are quite a few that you can add. So um, let's try small bedroom. Because uh, what I want to do, let's find the bass. Yeah, don't like that sound. Uh, but let's just move that off to the screen for a second. And I've never, I've never personally liked the sound of DI'd bass. Uh, but what I can do is load up good old Amplitube, which sounds like a strange choice, I know. But the Ampeg collection in here is actually really good. Um, where is it? Uh, collections, SVX, yeah. So V4B, let's try that. I'll leave the distorted bass channel in there. Yeah, immediately that sounds much better to my ears. But now I want to send that over to this short room, which I'll bring back on screen. Let's just listen to the room for a minute. He says. So that's kind of getting where I want to be with, what's LST? Um, yeah, it's it's amazing what that, um, the Ampeg, I went for the V4B, which I've literally just bought a V4B uh, for the studio, which I'm very excited about. Imagine an SVT head that doesn't blow the windows out, but still sounds like an Ampeg. So yeah, that. Uh, now, um... What else have we got that's very similar? Public spaces? No, I don't want this to be in a toilet. Right, so there's a direct level control in here, which I've just turned all the way off. Just let it load up. That's really interesting. I think I'm going to keep this. Um, the, the the idea here is that I want kind of a short room. And this is called the Scum Pub. And I think for a kind of a rough rock and roll kind of thing, that's actually a really cool idea. So I'm going to turn that way down. I don't need that much of this, but... It's just a really good starting place to have that kind of sound. And I'll come back to the plate and the delay when I get to the vocals and then probably add a little bit onto the drums. So let's get these named as kick, snare, spare, snare, toms, overheads. And we're going to start with the overheads. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, imagine someone's playing in the toilets, yeah. Right.
Now, that's a pretty cool overhead sound. It's very controlled. But what I'm going to start with... Actually, I'm going to quickly talk about my monitoring. I need to change the monitoring. I've been playing with Sienna, uh, which is the room... Uh, kind of... It's the, the room... Uh, emulation that Acoustica do. It's very similar to VSX, except that um, you can run it off these headphones or any of these other brands of headphones, which is lots. So I'm going to go back to Sonarworks today because that's what I usually use. And it would be really awkward of me to start using something different. But yeah, I've got this big big list of um, different uh, things that Acoustica do. So I'm looking at it going, what do I want? So did I install the Viridian? I did. Viridian. Because these are all full channel strips. So hopefully, if I get this, uh, A69, yeah, um, different preamps. There we go, yeah. So there's different preamps that I can push. <laughs> Yes, so there's peak and trough for these EQs. Right. Ah, uh, the top end went to minus, that's why it sounds muffly. So I'm going to go with top end. Just soften off the top end, because I don't want all that top end on the, uh, on the overheads. There we go, and I can scoop a little bit out of the, the low mids by using the trough mode on here. Now, let's turn on the compressor, shall we? Right, that's getting a bit loud. I'm going to turn my headphones up. There we go. And I've filtered the low end out so we don't get that womp, womp, womp thing. So if I turn it off, it's quite lifeless, and if I turn it on, it's got that oomph. Very nice. That might be all I need on the overheads, honestly, because I don't want to filter the low end too much on this, because I, I do really want... Although, actually, no, I will take a little bit out of the low end. I want these to be quite thick um, because there's not a huge amount of instrumentation on this song. So what I want is to do that and then see what the room holds. Yep, 
Yeah, so this one, I'm going to try something a little different. I'm going to go off with magenta, because the magenta is a kind of a manly style. does a massive passive, but I believe there is more to it. Preamp. So if I turn on preamp, I'm not entirely sure of the controls on this thing just yet. Ah, yes. <clears throat> Where's magenta comp? ST? It's ST for stereo? Yeah, so I think this is like the manly slam. Threshold, right. Ah. Don't like that. Um, let's turn that to just magenta 5 comp and see if that's better. There we go. Hello, Rick. Right, so... I believe that's the Manly Slam. So let's find where this horrible shh noise is. Because uh, there are some sounds in there that we don't want. definitely a sha sha on there that I don't want but I'm going to use soothe to uh, pull that down there we go There's some stuff going on on the overheads as well, but I don't need to be nearly as aggressive with Soothe on that. That's nice. Okay, thank you. <laughs> Actually, yeah, now we've got the overheads and rooms. I'm going to send the room over to that uh, room reverb. Because that does something very different again. Now I'm going to look at the kick. So I've got the in kick. 
which I kind of like, and the out kick, which I do not like. But between them, they give me something that I kind of like. So I'm going to look firstly at... Uh, I'm going to use the Neve Gold 4 on here and see what we get out of the Neve stuff. So everything's turned off by default, which I do kind of wish that these guys would have something on everywhere by default because uh, I kind of want the bus compression. I want everything... Just by turning everything on, the preamp and everything, it already sounds nicer. But there is a very specific uh, kind of honk in there that I do not like. Let's see if I can find it with a bonk, 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 bonk. Uh, what mode would get me there? Right, so that's the top end. What I need is to, to look at the low end specifically. This might do it. Let's, let's, oh, wrong one. That. And then 100 hertz. That's it. And then let's use a compressor here to just get a bit more oomph oomph. There we go. So without Oh boy, that's without, and that's with. Let's just try that with the overheads. Now it sounds kind of empty because we don't have the snare in yet, so. Let's also use gold for so that the, the Neve on the snare and see where we get. So we don't need a low pass on that. High pass 70. Let's get a big 100 hertz bump. Oh, let's turn these on. That helps. Where's that? Bit less, bit less of that. Bit more. Don't need a huge amount of high and maybe a little bit less, is 700? Really don't need any more high end, I'll just uh, turn that off. How much talking do you do the artist before so you get an idea of what they want? Depends on the band. I mean, with generally you can send me a song and I kind of get a feel of where it's supposed to go. Um, depends on the band and how big the project is that they how how much they want it to be. Right, so that now sounds like a thud compared to the kind of knock that we had before. So let's turn on the overheads in the rooms.
Right, so the overheads in the rooms are still too loud. So that, that snare needs to go to that short room. But also needs to go to a plate reverb. So I'm going to make another copy of silver there. Hit save. And swap this out now for the uh, snare plate on the Lexicon 480. hats in there. Oh boy. No need to have quite so much of you, thank you very much. Um, so what we're going to do now is, uh, what, what can I do that's nice and easy? I'm going to use sand. I think sand is the SSL so I'm going to use the Sand 3 EQ, just the EQ. And firstly, just filter out a lot of the crap. There we go. And also filter out some of the top end. I put it on the line preamps. Apparently the preamps just give it a bit more something, so then I'm going to find that schlock, schlock, schlock. There we go, that sounds like a hi-hat now, so let's try and blend that back in with the others. There we go, I can feel the hi-hat in there now when it's needed. Doesn't have to be super loud. Well, let's turn off that group, that group, and that group. You can still hear a bit of rumble on the kick, but I kind of like that. So the rumble's coming from the overheads. Oh no, it's coming from the toms. Yeah, I don't know what's going on there. Um, these need gating, definitely. Uh, so, let's use good old Reaper gate. And go with the Tom gate stock setting and see how far we get. That works nicely. So, ding. Butt smasher, butt smasher, butt smasher. There we go, deleted. So that, that works really well on the bottom, Tom. Let's look on the... So let's just see on this one if that works. I'm going to put the release down a bit on this one. And with the top one. Oh, that's a question. Because I don't know what went on there, but there's a definite click. Sometimes that click on the... Uh,
Yeah, I don't know what happened with these Tom mics, but a lot of the time it looks like they've got some sort of electrical clipping on, whether they the microphones them, themselves have been like smashed against things. Marshall, hello. Yes, this is a paid project, yes. Uh, so this is kind of, this is still me doing what I do. I'm just experimenting with a, a different set of tools than I would usually usually use. So, yes, this is like a car mechanic going to work to fix cars, but just happens to be using a different screwdriver. Right, so uh, this gives me a chance to uh, uh, play with something new because I'm trying to reach out and use stuff other than the kind of the slate stuff that I've become very uh, accustomed to using. There's some very aggressive clicks in there which very strange and hopefully I can kind of iron those out but it looks like I'm kind of manually gating my toms anyway and then just letting the actual gate plug in do the rest of the work I'm just not leaving it any chance to bleed if you get me so even though the cuts look a bit rough then the gate if it's programmed correctly should do the rest of the attack and release envelopes uh, to help me out. Especially with uh, Toms, I find that they have a lot of bleed. This could be a lot faster. And that is so much bleed. And there's, there's like, yeah, there's a click on there. God only knows what that big poof came from. But I don't think... I don't think this top tom gets hit at all until much later on in the song. So, may as well take out all those issues rather than causing problems for myself uh either the cables were a little bit faulty on these so whenever the the other shells got hit it caused some sort of problem or perhaps um ooh. that's a that's a ding um you know that that's a potential that could have caused these sounds but yeah there are possibilities but they're all taken care of now there we go because now the uh, that gate is doing what it's supposed to do I'm just trimming these because it's not worth dealing with later. And I've not actually done the bottom, Tom. I think whatever microphone was used on the bottom, Tom, you can see the massive difference in bleed compared to the other mics. Yeah, spectral. Well, this isn't even spectral processing. This is just spectral peaks, so I can see stuff, but it's not actually spectral editing. You can do spectral editing in Reaper. Um, that would be a very different thing. Spectral edits. That would be that. That's a spectrogram. That 
is some seriously next level stuff. And yeah. Been trying to get the best out of the bedroom with two 451s. Ooh, very, very bright mics. Um, yeah. Hope you do well there. <laughs> now, so let's add some mojo to these toms. So this is where I'm looking at my list. Um, let's use, I think it's called, yeah, Ultramarine Strip. This... Uh, is a Fairchild 670, one of the most ridiculous. Yeah. This downloader is very CPU heavy. What downloader would that be, my friend? Don't know what you mean. But yeah. Oh, there's a reverb in there, apparently. That's all about. I don't know. Um, ah, you've got to turn them on. So we want to get rid of, these are all boosts, right? Okay, so this must be some seriously rare gear. I don't actually want any of that off this. This is a really confusing thing. Let's just open the regular. Hey, Scott. But yeah, the, the downloader is not CPU heavy at all. Do you mean the plugins are CPU heavy? Because like so far I've got one on every channel and let's have a look. I'm at something like 4% my processor usage. I mean, they can be more CPU intensive than other things, but if you've got a modern processor, it shouldn't be a problem. There we go. So we're just starting to get, uh, there we go. These, ah, ah, they're, they're not stereo linked. Got you, uh, control link. That should work. And then I'm going to give these uh, a big, fat, analog kind of sound. I'm going to go back to that Viridian that I used earlier. CPU heavy as far as downloading. I definitely did not find that. Um, don't know what to tell you. Okay, person saying click where it says pre. Um, you can't really do that because you're already long since past uh, whatever it was that you were trying to tell me. Ah, that's. Let's boost the low end on there. Whoa, that's a lot. And I don't know if we need to dip the mids, but if we want to, we can. Yeah, let's try that in the in the context. Yes, I know how to turn on the uh, the preamps, Mark. Thank you. How to mix solo guitar. I only use cheap guitars and unbranded pickups. How do I get good mixing for guitar solos? No idea. 
uh, because I don't know how your guitar sounds. I don't know what amps you have. Uh, maybe get a better guitar. I don't know. So this just is a false trigger, which just needs a bit of a volume bump because the gate isn't catching it. Uh, Scott, you didn't miss any distressor type plugin. I've not found one yet. Here's, here's the thing. Yeah, so in Ultramarine, no, I didn't turn on the pre purposefully. If I just click on pre, then yeah, I'll get that. But we might start at getting double and triple. I'll leave it on. I mean, it doesn't sound worse. But what I'm going to do is go back to Viridian and that low end bump that I've put on there, get rid of that. And not push the input pre quite so hard. Um, because what I'm going to do next is, well, take that level down a little and just... That sounds nice and crisp. What I'm going to do is add a the purple, which is the pull tech, uh, to the whole drum bus. Uh, da -da. There you go, Scott's coming to your rescue with uh, stuff about guitar solos. Uh, purple 3 AA, let's try that one. Hello, Anna. <laughs> and yes, good night. There we go. So we've got a kind of a pull tech style. Ooh. There's, there's too much high frequency boost on those toms now, I can hear it very clearly. Will there be a mixed video with Kush audio plugins? If they send them to me, why not? But what I'm trying to do right now is bring out more oomph on the kick. What can I use to make that kick more kicky? Um, what do I have? Let's try the top. Try the tape. Let's let's get the uh, just. Oh, someone gonna be a bot smasher? There we go. That's a big sounding kick that's going through a tape and then a bit of EQ here. Let's just take some of that mud out. Can a DI box deal with noise? Uh, maybe? A, a good DI box should reduce the amount of noise that you have on a guitar signal, but a lot of guitar noise comes from your surroundings. If you're too near to too much electrical equipment, that's where noise comes from. 
But if your PC doesn't use grounding, you're potentially in some trouble there. We're starting to really get the mud out of that kick now. And I might just hit the tape on the snare too. Oh, not that one. <laughs> Danny said, "Have I um, the Lewitt interface that dropped today? Um, have I checked it out yet? Um, you mean one of these? Yeah, I'm going to be uh, reviewing that fairly soon. So yes, um, Yes, that that'll be uh, that'll be on the stream fairly soon. But yeah. That sounds much thicker with the tape. But what I am going to do is use it's that is the Lewitt Connect 6. It's their new two channel interface that has the uh, processing for the, the compression and everything for the the microphones inbuilt. Oh, I found an Engel straight 100 watt. Nice. Yeah, so what I'm going to do now is just blend in a little mix of uh, a more powerful snare sound, but not a lot of it. <laughs> don't like the idea of mics falling apart in the middle of a session. Yeah, don't have mics that fall apart. So I'm going to go into my browser here. I'm probably, I'm just going to turn on Audition and see which one of these. Oh. Why is that not making any sound? A snare. Uh. Bang your snare. That. That's much more. So I don't want much of that because that really on its own doesn't suit the song. I mean, if I, if I try and play that with the rest of the drums, that's going to sound horrible. See, that just that doesn't sound right for the song. But if I take the mix back to zero and just blend in a little bit, Still sounds real, but there we go. That just gives it a much bigger, thicker sound. And I've done it instead of on a separate track, I've done it on this track. It was a tip that I learned from uh, Dan Weller. Yeah, my CPU's not dying. My CPU doesn't even really care about so far. So, what FX 4.8%? But yeah, um, yeah. If the houses don't have good grounding, go and make a good ground. Go and get like a copper pole and stick it into the ground and connect it to the mains ground. I mean that that's something that is relatively easy to do. 
Do I think you should do DI box or need manual grounding? Both. Do I happen to know what mics were used on the snare for the free flow to an ELE? Don't know. Uh, unfortunately, that is not something I am privy to. Um, as far as I know, anyway, I don't. I don't think I know. Um, some of the mics in there, it does say on them what they are, but uh, that's for on the kick. It does tell you on on the rest of them. I think. Uh, let's just open contacts and see if it does tell me quickly. Seeing as how you asked. Uh, bear with me a second, folks. Be right with you, folks. Um. Da 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 da. -da. Oh, it's still loading in. I thought it sounded a bit uh, weak. No, it does sound a bit. I think I need to take a bit of low end out of the uh, the drum kit I've been mixing. I think I've been mixing into it a little, uh, well, very low end heavy um, shells mix. It just says snare top and bottom, whereas with the kick it does say which mics. So yeah, no dice there, unfortunately. Did I hear that Acoustic is fixing their plugin with their new framework? Which makes it close to the hardware and use less CPU. I don't know what you're talking about there. Um, uh, but I think they're on like core 17 or 18. And so they've been updating and updating. And because I have a modern CPU that can do things like AVX uh, vector extensions and things, they can take advantage of that and make it more CPU efficient than ever. So, yeah. Yeah, that kick's got a bit too much wumph on there. That's definitely my fault for going... That's starting to sound pretty good. Now, um, I probably for this song want to also do the gold for pre on the drum bus after the pull tech and just choose a, uh, which one was it? Um, bus preamp. Uh, I don't know which one's there. Let's just try one and see what happens. That does sound nicer. Cool. Ah, yes, Marshall, of course. Yeah, with the, uh, the looking and reading things. Yeah, got you. Okay. But yeah, I think I'm going to spread this gold four pre across every bus that I work on. So let's now bring in what will be far too loud, the bass. Ah, right, your room is far from the ground. No, you can't just stick nails into the floor. No, that's not how you get grounding. Because uh, if you're on a high floor, then no, that's... No, it is it literal ground, like soil. Like, you need to go two feet deep um, to get good electrical connection. That That's something you'll need to talk to someone who's more of an electrical expert rather than someone who mixes for that. I'm not your guy.
Right, now we're getting into the interesting stuff because now it's guitar time. They're definitely too loud again. Those sound really good, so what I'm going to do is mute them for now and start to focus on the vocals. Feeling a grudge to the mother he never had. So these, we, we definitely need, uh, well, I'm going to use the, come on, finish your sentences, Adam. Um, I'm going to use the top, the tape here on the vocals. Now, there is a verse and a chorus vocal, but I'm going to leave those currently as, as a folder and just work on them as one thing. Now, I'm going to look in the presets for top because there are a few that I saw earlier for vocals. Let's try that. Feeling a grudge to the mother he never had. That sounds nice, but let's move on. Feeling a grudge to the mother he never had. That's more like it, where we're really pushing. We're taking top end off and we're really pushing the bright tape. Feeling a grudge to the mother he never had. Yep, yeah, and there's a compressor. Feeling a grudge to the mother he never had. Feeling a grudge to... Yep, yeah, so that's... That's looking like our vocal was recorded well onto tape. Uh, something else that I want to do is get a 76 style compressor on there. What 76 style compressors do I have? Arturia to the rescue. No, I don't need a tutorial for how a 76 works, thanks. Fastest release, 4 to 1, medium attack. Feeling a grudge to the mother he never had. Feeling a grudge to the mother he never had. There we go. Nice and controlled. And now I can do things like uh, looking at what I've got. Let's, tr let's try something a little crazy. Let's look at Amber, which is, I think, Avalon style. So that's uh, an Avalon style EQ. I don't even know if I need that um this is where i'm gonna get the uh delay going was it was lime the delay i can't remember now um ooh, bot smasher bot smasher that is really cool looking but is not what i had in mind um what was the plugin called? Did I not install it, maybe? Because uh, there's... Right, effects. Delay. Lemon. Did I install Lemon? Lee Lemon. I did not install Lemon. Uh, let's bring up the installer... And see if we can do it. Aquarius, that's what it's called. Yes, yes, yes. Diddly ding ding. Um, uh, see if that'll come up. Definitely not CPU heavy. Uh, oh, new content. Erin. Oh. There's a new marketing -y one that came out to... Uh, mastering, not marketing. Um... Ah, the home page is actually working properly for me now. Um, let's look under purchased for lemon. Sorry, I'm doing this off screen, I know. Uh, lemon VST install. Let's see how big the delay unit is file-wise. Because this 2.6 gigabytes for a delay. That's one thing that I've noticed about the Acoustica stuff. You're waiting for me to play on the guitar solo part. Why is this? There isn't really a guitar solo part in the song, I don't think. Is it? Is this your song, Risky? Um, or is this just, just a question?
Yeah, I, I wouldn't worry about what the microphones are. It just sounds good. Do you know that? But yeah, in, in the meantime, I'm going to use, instead of Lemon, I'm going to still use a slapback delay, but I'm, I'm going to use Echo Boy by Sound Toys while that downloads because, yeah. Did I get the AA? Oh, Nickel is the name of the 1176. I am still digging through all of the plugins because I, I got so much. Uh, nickel. Uh, nickel. Show me nickel. Yeah, task manager. Yes, it um it does use IRs. Pretty much all of their stuff uses IRs. Um, the, is there a guitar solo part? Well, there are interesting guitar parts, but they're not what I would call strictly solo parts. It's an interesting instrumentation. This anyway. Um, let's make sure this is entirely uh mix wet on here and send the vocal over Do you know that? and get this to be very tape like by having a speed of around 160 milliseconds Do you know that feeling the indoctrinated sound do you know that feeling the indoctrinated sound there you go that didn't take very much to get that to be uh very uh very rock and roll but yeah let's open up the uh cpu utilization and have a look at uh, aquarius 0.2 percent of my cpu that is not cpu heavy at all do you know that feeling the induct i might push the tape harder do you know that feeling the indoctrinated sound so that's just starting to break the edge of distortion let's see that in the mix do you know that feeling the indoctrinated Right now, this this is how I've started to. Uh, there's a there's a sanctioned unofficial list of what everything was. Oh, uh, yes, yes, please. I mean, that's the kind of thing that I I need. Being very new to this because um, Acoustica aren't really allowed to say what all their plugins are like, and I've worked out a lot of them by doing a bit of googling. But there's such a massive list of them that kind of I. Completely honestly, I wouldn't have just gone out and bought every single one of these off the bat because that's a lot of money. These are not cheap. Uh, so I've kind of been overfaced with too many plugins to begin with, which is, is going to happen. It happened to me with the virtual mix rack when everything was just too much and I had to kind of get to, to know them a bit. And it kind of happened with the PSP and Finish Trip a little bit, but less so because that was a bit more of a manageable kind of thing. Um, so it does take a little while to get settled, but I know in my mind kind of what I want to do. And if I was sat with a, a room full of hardware where I would go, I want a Neve here, I want an SSL here. Oh, you've got a Manly, I'll use that on this. That is kind of how I would work in a, an analog environment. So I'm kind of doing that in cherry picking right now. But if there's anything that they do that I don't know about, then, yeah. What's the best budget amp for HD 650s? Budget, use what's in your interface. Um, if we're talking not quite that budget, the one that I'm using is from a company called Sheet Audio, which I mispronounce on purpose because otherwise the great algorithm will get me. But um, S-C-H-I-I-T, I'm using their balanced amp called the Magnius with a special uh, balanced headphone cable uh, for these which is not crazy expensive. I think it was something like $250, $200, which considering that I do most of my work on these, that's why I didn't mind spending that money. But that did already sound good with Echo Boy. Now, uh, check the link up there, up where? 
What link? Let's have a look. I don't see a link. You might have to send that to me on somewhere like, um, what's the word? Um, on Discord or somewhere like that. Do you know that feeling? That in but it looks like uh, Lemon has now installed, and now I can uh, get Nickel installed as well. So yeah, this is coming together now. Right now, one of the cool tricks about Reaper is I can now get Lemon on here without closing it. Rescan for new plugins. And it's going to go, oh, new plugins. Lemon, 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 lemon. Okay. And so now, just for experiment's sake, I'm going to replace... Uh, the slap delay uh, from Echo Boy with Lee Lemon. Right, so vocal, uh, where's the wet and dry? Is there a wet dry or is it just, you get what you get? Mix, yeah, entirely wet. Do you know that? So uh, let's drag in a preset short. Uh, rockabilly. Oh, let's see what we got. Galactic Quadrant. Do you know that feeling the indoctrinating sound? Do you know that feeling the indoctrinating Sounds kind of nice, but not what I was after. Tape touch might be the one. 100% wet. Do you know that feeling the indoctrinating sound do you know that Ooh. feeling the indoctrinating sound i kind of like that do you know that feeling the indoctrinating sound do uh, i'm gonna add to this though because uh, that's the tape delay. So that's 25 and 40. I'm going to turn another one on and uh, make this 100 and... Oh, 150. Do you know that feeling the indoctrinating sound? Do you know that feeling the indoctrinating and on the other side, I'm going to put 165, panned right, and on. Do you know that feeling, the indoctrinating sound? Do you know that Ooh, I can feeling, just make it sound a bit more dull, a bit of a high pass. Liking the, the control that I've got here, definitely. Do you know that feeling, the indoctrinating sound? You... So here's with Echo Boy. Do you know that feeling? And here's with Lemon. Do you know that? I might have gone a bit loud with it. Do you know that? But here's, feeling here's without. The indoctrinating and sound. here's with. Do you know that feeling? Bit too much low end on that snare. Do you know that feeling, the indoctrinating sound? Do you know that feeling, the indoctrinating sound? Do you know that? Say. Right now, let's bring the guitars in. Oh, let's also add that copy of the Gold Four Pre to the vocals. Bring in the guitars.
Right. So, um, I've got the guitar lead and the verse here. That needs driving, I think. Uh, the the whole thing, the whole the whole guitar group needs driving pretty hard. Uh, what do we have that we've not really used yet? Um, because it needs to be quite kind of aggressive and angry, and I'm really leaning towards the Viridian for for this. Uh, so this is going to be Telefunken V seven. Uh, the the V seventy two. Uh, let's go for 700 hertz and a little bit of a push. Just a little bit of a push. Helps when you turn on your compressor. Durr. 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 Cool. Now the uh, the one on the right there is a bit too bright, uh, which I can probably deal with with uh, an SSL style EQ, just the sand EQ. I didn't install water, so uh, thank you for the suggestion, but I will try that another time. I missed with the EQ. This is going to be really bright. I stuck it in the wrong channel because uh, I just missed with the mouse. Let's try that again. That's going to be super bright. So let's take it down. Too far away. Yeah, there we go. This one over here is a bit dull. So that needs, I'm just going to copy the sand EQ across and do the exact opposite with this one. Turn the brightness up, uh, find the kind of three, 400 hertz honk. <laughs> oh, actually. Yeah, do that with it. It's very Queens of the Stone Age. I'll put the mic preamp on as well. Yeah, very Queens of the Stone Age. That's going to need a ton of delay. So that that can be a uh, lemon candidate. Because that guitar on its own, it's it's not got the, uh, the awesomeness. Uh, yeah, 
yeah. You, you, okay, cool. Yeah, if you share the link on Discord, that's appreciated. Uh, let's have a look. Um, cool. Interesting that um, this is, it's an analog delay and it sounds nice, but it's not doing anything on the other side. It's not ping ponging or anything like that. It's a nice. Oh, or is it? Oh. Ah, that's because it's hard panned to the right. Right. Okay. What I need to do is use one of uh, the basic just just a good old panner and i'll use that one just the surround pan it sounds obvious but i'm just gonna pan this off all the way to the right before the before the delay and then turn the level down disappointing that it doesn't do any kind of panning afterwards unless let's just what's a ping pong pan what does that do oh god no um uh let's go with cassette magic That's kind of nice. Uh, guitar Carl.
Cool. Hi, Nick. Yes, I'm much better from... Uh, I don't think I had COVID, but I had a flu, but I also got concussion on Sunday. So I'm a little bit soft of head, shall we say, today, but I'm doing all right. Now, um, this is not quite as loud as I would have thought I would have hit it with, which is fine. Because it means I can now hit this tape harder and then hit God Particle harder. So it's going to get louder. Oh, Pooninja, hello. When are we going to show that bass with the whammy bar? As soon as I remember where the whammy bar is, I think it's in the box. In the oh, we've we've had a heck of a time with uh, with buying this house, and it's been ugh, a lot of pain uh, uh, alongside a major project I'm working on, which I've not been able to tell you all about. So I've been so busy and ill and everything. But yeah, the the whammy bass is going to make an appearance. Actually, yeah, I'll just said, yeah, the spatial sound of everything is really impressive. I'm really impressed with a lot of this as well. Like the uh, the the lemon slap delay where I've got 20 and 40 milliseconds, then 150, 165. And it's really bringing the vocal out. The guitars are not overly done. I, at first, I felt like it should have more jing, 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 driving guitars in there. Um... But yeah, the the oh nothing sounds overly nasty or anything. Yes, I've got soothe on the overheads and drum rooms, but not on the master. Uh the the bass that that short room that's through silver is the the sounds like a bar. <laughs> it sounds good. I'm just gonna listen through the song one more time, and honestly, I think I might be done. I've been searching for some monsters for the scene. Was that me? I've been searching for some monsters, but they seem to far away. Oh, 
one more thing that I'm going to change is that Nickel just got installed in the background. So I'm just going to rescan. And if Nickel is in 1176, as, as mentioned, then I'm going to try uh, replacing the Archoria Comp FET 76 with Nickel. So we've got Nickel Pre, we've got Nickel EQ and Nickel Comp. Nickel Comp is going to be what I want then. Uh, don't want Rev H, I guess. I mean, I don't know. Let's find out. On the web to the impression, however, still we got insane. Full harmonics. We're going, we're going with this. And where's input? So. On the web to the impression, however, still we got insane. Uh, I release very fast. Uh, don't need to filter and. On the world to the impression, however, still we got insane. There we go. If that's distorting a little bit, that's exactly how I would have a 76 on vocals run really hot. On the world to the impression, however, still we got insane. So the, the, the Arturia one sounds a little bit kind of limp in comparison. Let's try this in context. On the world to the impression, however, still we Okay, so I think the nickel is something I'm going to be using from now on. That's I'm really quite impressed with that. Um, yeah, uh, Corwin says turn up, turn up, turn up. What? I mean, hey, if you want it to be turned up, you turn it up. Um, but yeah, it it's I'm really impressed with that that nickel. Uh, let's look at the yeah. So it's using a good you know fifth point five percent of the CPU. I mean. This is, for a lot of people's computers, this would be quite taxing. For me, it's it's not, but that's because I, like I said at the start of the stream, use an absolute monster of a thing. But let's play it right from the top. And if there's anything that needs changing, this is the last stop before I send it to the band uh, to see what they think. But yeah. I've been searching for some monsters, but they seem to find
cool. I'm pretty happy with where I've got to with that. And yeah, no, I don't want to do things like cross panning reverbs because that's how you end up with a. I've been searching right. for some right. monsters. This... That's how you end up with a too busy mix, a too thick mix. Um, it I thought that was a fair suggestion. Um, but yeah, it's um. It's the kind of thing that can... It sounds nice on its own in the context of a mix. It can actually be too much. That's why, like, two of these guitars are completely hard panned. It, it feels like maybe you should bring them in more, but if you do, then they get lost and you want things to have their own space because no matter what you're listening on, uh, you have to keep in mind that a lot of people listen on different things. And, like... Hard panning is not the faux pas that it used to be. Uh, you can really get away with it. And people say, oh, what about radio? Screw radio. People listen on Spotify now. Spotify is stereo by default. And then they're like, oh, what if you listen in the car? Well, you can hear both sides. And then it gives more space for the vocal to be nice and clear. Um, I, every great mix engineer that I look up to every time I think I'm doing okay I listen to their stuff and I'm like well I should keep it simpler because they make things simple and that's how they get the massive sounds it doesn't sound quite as pleasing to us as mix engineers but then you play it back on a big system and you go actually yeah I get it so there you go yes well if you think the left guitar is too loud Oh, there is still something a bit not nice going on in this guitar which needs there we go there was just a rumble on there and let's just push 500 hertz ish oh steady on there not much of that very very gentle And nope, I like that guitar. It's it's supposed to be quite pokey, quite big on the mids. Too much. Co this is not a this is not a stream where you're supposed to tell me how to mix. I'm telling you how I do what I do. Listen to things like Queens of the Stone Age. Listen to um, other rock stuff. Quite often there will be sonic discrepancies on the sides, and it's fine. It's okay. It's all right. And with the greatest of respect, Anton, I don't care what you like. You say, I like it, but I don't care. I like it. I think that sounds great and so that's what I'm going with and if the band come back to me and say actually it's a little too much then we'll do something about it so <laughs> yeah because at this point this is how I would like this song to sound which is what the band are paying for but then we make small changes at the end um it depends because you might find that that really pokey guitar on one side, it sounds unusual because a lot of bands don't do it. Then you put it up against something like a Queens of the Stone Age track and suddenly it fits, it works, it makes sense. And for the instrumentation that I've been given as well, um, this is not a song that has like perfectly matched stereo pan guitars either. So I don't have that to work with. And it can, it's... It's fair again. I'm not going to labour the point, but sometimes it's worth doing things that don't make logical sense to make something cool. And so, yeah, what might not work with your initial kind of expectations, shall we say, because we always expect 
rhythm guitars on rock stuff to be perfectly stereo matched and perfectly balanced. Spend some more time listening to alternative rock and indie rock and you'll find that very often that's not the case. And yeah, like Marty says, it's very, very good to ask questions like, I think the left guitar's louder, why have you done that? Or is that okay? Be because asking questions is what this is all about. But saying to people like me, you should do this, you should do that, you should do this. No. No, I really shouldn't. <laughs> Um, because if I did, I would sound like everybody else, and then no one would come to me to mix, because I'd just be another face in the crowd. So, there you go. Uh, I'm going to export this as mix one, and we'll see, because this has now hit 10% of the CPU, which is actually a fair bit for this scary monster, but we're just going to hit export render on that. And yeah, I'm really quite impressed with the Acoustica plugins uh they are not cheap that much i know so definitely keep an eye out around the uh what's the word uh around the black friday kind of sales see if you can grab yourself some of this stuff from what i've heard today this is all first impressions to me but the tape sounded really good the nickel compressor was really good because i like really heavily driven 1176 compressors i've got two of them in the studio and that's what i do with them um the gold for uh, is the neve thing that i i love the neve sound and it just doesn't sound overly overdone in any particular point so yeah very impressed uh where's the band from i think they're scandinavian uh, one of our, they're called Hobo Hotel, and they are, um, I can't remember where they said they were from, uh, but they're, they've got members of the band called, like, uh, Skjalg Holfer, Jonas Lippestad Johansson, Thomas Bierklund, Daniel Anderson is a supporter on Patreon of the channel, and it was him that reached out to me, and, uh, has commissioned this mix so yes uh i'm gonna listen to this uh on some different uh methods as well because i think at the end there i switch switched to oh that's making the blong song uh the blong sound uh i switched to uh sienna uh which is the um uh, sienna is their um a speaker room emulation thing so i'm going to switch back at some point to the regular sonar works that i'm used to i don't like it as much as sienna but that's kind of the point i think so i'm going to double check everything because using too many new tools at once may be skewing my judgment i'm quite uh, prepared to admit that especially in terms of the listening environment so it might take a bit of a uh an off stream double check on the, the setup that I'm used to to make sure that it's right. But the general impressions I'm getting are very good. Now, like I said earlier, I did suffer a concussion on Sunday and I'm okay, but I, I am getting some headaches. So I'm going to take an early night after this and go to bed because the sleep will help. Um, I interviewed the CEO of Austrian Audio today, which was very cool. So that's coming out on the podcast soon. And I also inter uh, interviewed Roger Cloud from Cloud Microphones last week. And now I've got the footage to edit that together. Um, I also need to edit a video for the channel about uh, using the Steam Deck uh, with Windows and plugins. So, yeah, I, I believe Hobo Hotel are a very new band. But don't quote me on that. <laughs> but yeah, there's there's a lot in the pipeline. And now that I'm not technically ill anymore... Uh, yeah, you're going to see a lot more of me uh, for the foreseeable future. So thanks, everybody, for hanging in with me. And I will see you all very soon. Uh, don't forget to give the video a like and uh, support us on Patreon and everything. I'm not currently uh, set the new OBS since the new Windows install for all the graphics and stuff. Uh, do I have a spot for my mixing rates? Currently, no. Uh, people just get in contact with me and we work it out based on how many songs they've got whether they're complex uh how far they've gotten you know we we, we sort rates out per client and yeah 
Some clients, uh, I'm happy to do it for less if they're friends, if it's music I really like. Some of them are the way around. So, yeah, I don't have fixed rates. Fixed rates are never clever for professional mix engineers unless you are someone like Chris Lord Algae and it's crazy money. So, yes, thank you, everybody. <laughs> and I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.